Bezos and Branson are two big names who are heading out of this world, literally. Of course, Elon Musk is also another quite wealthy, eccentric man who also has dreams and realistic goals of space travel. So what do all of these men have in common? Aside from their apparent love for space or goals of space travel, they're also billionaires. Only difference between the three of them and me is that I got more money. And if you saw Branson's successful launch and return, then you likely know about the memes, headlines, and numerous claims that he was actually racing Bezos and obviously just beat him in said race to space. However, it appears that this isn't much of a race. Instead, we just got three rich guys who are trying to pursue their dreams and now they have the money to do so. And it's not like Musk made the decision to go to space and then all of a sudden Bezos and Branson thought it'd be cool too. These men have been working on their goals for decades and finally in 2021, it seems their dreams are coming true. Today on LBQ, we're asking why are all the billions is going to space. Smash that like button and let's get to exploring, folks. So naturally, the answer to our question, why are all the billionaires going to space, appears to be somewhat obvious. Because they want to and can. Given that they are the owners and likely huge investors in these ventures, why wouldn't they want to be one of the first to explore space for the sake of a leisurely trip? Aside from that, it's also good press. As you can clearly see, all weekend the media has been making headlines about the space race, the fact that billionaire Sir Richard Branson is going to space, and why Bezos is pissed. But as previously mentioned, it appears this truly has been a long time coming. Virgin Galactic was founded back in 2004, and since then, they've had a total of four space launches with hopes of reaching the edge of the atmosphere, two which have failed, and two which, after this weekend, were clearly a success. Back in 2007, a rocket motor test gone wrong would unfortunately lead to the death of three, and three others would suffer injuries. In 2014, aka test number two, the rocket plane, named Enterprise after a ship from Star Trek, would break apart during a test flight, killing a pilot and seriously injuring another. 2018 would be Virgin's first successful launch, and the ship named Unity, after late physicist Stephen Hawking, would reach heights out of this world two more times thereafter. The most recent launch saw Sir Richard Branson on board, making the 70-year-old mogul one of just under 600 people to have actually left the Earth's atmosphere. Speaking prior to the trip, Branson said, I quote, I'm in my 70s now, so you either let yourself go or you get fit and enjoy life. I'll be looking back at our beautiful Earth and taking it all in. Now here's where things get interesting. Originally, Branson and Virgin Galactic were supposed to head to space later this summer. Upon hearing that Jeff Bezos and his company Blue Origin were also reaching heights never before seen, Branson moved his launch date up. So now let's talk about Jeff Bezos and why everyone saw this as a competition. For starters, they made it a competition. After it was announced that Bezos would be on board the space flight launching on July 20th, many were shocked that the billionaire would risk his life being a part of a mission which well, there's no guarantees to say the least. And people were even more surprised when Richard Branson announced they'd be moving their launch up to July 11th, just a week and a few days prior to Bezos' launch. Clearly this rubbed Jeff or someone at Blue Origin Company the wrong way, which is why ever since Branson's announcement, Blue Origin has been on a PR mission to prove the Virgin Galactic founder isn't actually going to space. On July 9th, the official Blue Origin Twitter account would post a comparison graphic explaining why their company is better than Virgin Galactic in the nicest way possible. The tweet read, I quote, from the beginning, New Shepard was designed to fly above the Carman line so none of our astronauts have an asterisk next to their name. For 96% of the world's population, space begins 100 kilometers up at the internationally recognized Carman line. A follow up tweet also read, I quote, only 4% of the world recognizes a lower limit of 80 km or 50 miles as the beginning of space. New Shepard flies above both boundaries. One of the many benefits of flying with Blue Origin. Their graphics attached to both tweets compared the ships, explaining that Blue Origin flying above the 100 km mark were whereas Virgin won't. On top of that, they highlight the vehicle types, comparing Blue Origin's rocket to Virgin's high altitude plane, and the size of the windows, again with Blue Origin's being, I quote, the largest windows in space, compared to Virgin's airplane sized windows, as the graphic refers to them. They also took shots at the amount of test flights, comparing Bezos' 15 to Branson's 3, as well as the impact on the ozone, and an escape system which Bezos' craft has, and Branson's didn't. All in all, this was a very petty move. So the day of the launch, when Jeff Bezos posted a photo of Richard Branson to his Instagram page, wishing him luck on the launch, many were confused. Some understood why he did what he did, taking the high road and appearing to be a genuine intellectual, rather than a spiteful, well, you know. Bezos captioned the photo, I quote, at Richard Branson, wishing you and the whole team a successful and safe flight tomorrow. Best of luck. Following Branson's successful launch and landing, Bezos posted another photo of the plane landing captured at Richard Branson and crew, congratulations on the flight, can't wait to join the club. Elon Musk also chimed in on Twitter, replying to one of Richard Branson's tweets prior to the launch with, I quote, we'll see you there to wish you the best. In response, Branson would tweet out, I quote, thanks for being so typically supportive and such a good friend, Elon. Great to be opening up space for all, safe travels and see you at Spaceport America. 
Now, was this a shot at Bezos, referring to Elon as a typically supportive and good friend? Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it seems all of these guys are going not so much for bragging rights, but because they're genuinely interested in space exploration and for bragging rights. At the start of the month, Branson would release a video explaining, I quote, I've always been a dreamer. My mom taught me never to give up and to reach for the stars. This July, our dream will become a reality. Prior to Branson's video, Jeff Bezos would release a video explaining his plans of joining the Blue Origins team on the New Shepard, a reusable rocket built by his company. In the video, Bezos said, I quote, I want to go on this flight because it's the thing I've wanted to do all my life. It's an adventure. It's a big deal for me. So maybe rather than it being a competition of who could reach space first for bragging rights, this is truly just a story of two guys with childhood dreams coming true. I mean, as a kid, didn't we all want to go to space? Be an astronaut. So from one sense, yeah, it seems like the reason these guys are going to space is simply because they want to live out their childhood dreams. However, as you can clearly see, there may also be a sense of competition or rivalry to it as well. It wasn't a coincidence that following Bezos' announcement that he'd be going to space on July 20th, Branson and Virgin Galactic would move their launch date up to July 11th, nine days before the Blue Origin launch. However, at the same time, when asked if they were doing it just to beat Blue Origin, it appears the company noted there may be a sense of competitiveness, but ultimately they moved up the launch because they felt ready and that the time was right. Whatever helps them sleep, I guess. <laughs> Another major difference between Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic is not only the heights which they'll be reaching, but who's going to be on the craft. Virgin Galactic's successful launch included pilots Dave McKay and Michael Such Masucci. Virgin Galactic's VP of Government Affairs and Research Operations, Sirisha Banda, Colin Bennett, the lead operations engineer at Virgin, and Beth Cohen, the chief astronaut at Virgin, alongside top doc Richard Branson, were all strapped in to ensure a successful launch. When Bezos and the crew go up in Blue Origin's craft, it appears there won't be anyone with such qualifications on board. Aside from Jeff, his brother Mark, an anonymous auction winner, and 82 year old Wally Funk will be on board without any pilots manning the ship. Funk is an astronaut who was training to go to space in the 60s, but was never allowed the opportunity because she was a woman. Bezos is ensuring she's able to complete her mission. And given that Jeff is willing to go on this trip, being the first human flight, well it seems quite evident he's willing to risk it all, and is rather confident in his company's protocols and achievements. All in all, it appears this whole race to space with billionaires is a mix of things. For starters, we got a couple guys who are interested in space exploration and have the money to go there. For those of you unaware, the starting price for Virgin Space Trip will cost you around $250,000 per seat, and a lot of people have already booked their flights. It's unclear what Blue Origin is going to charge their future passengers, and of course, Elon Musk's SpaceX is a whole other story in itself. Musk wasn't as involved in this competition, for lack of a better word, simply because he's not in any rush to beat the others. Still, he too is expecting a launch later this year. But aside from fulfilling childhood dreams and making a lot of money, it's likely due to legacy that these guys want to achieve what they want to achieve. Sure, owning Amazon, Virgin, or Tesla is a big deal. Being one of the richest men in the world is also a big deal. However, you guys probably have no idea who Bernard Arnault is. Or maybe you do, but he's actually the number one richest man in the world, ahead of both Musk and Bezos. But Musk and Bezos are more household names, at least in my opinion. So aside from having all the money to create a legacy, you must do things others haven't. And given that these guys are trying to normalize space tourism, well, much like other innovators, it seems the name Richard Branson, Jeff Bezos, and Elon Musk will forever go down in history simply because of the accomplishments, or at the very least, attempts of changing life as we know it. And this is bigger than us just seeing worlds from space. If these companies can perfect and potentially simplify space travel for tourism reasons, just imagine how much easier exploration will be for the real scientists, going for reasons other than leisure. All in all, it seems the space race is happening to cement legacy, inflate egos, potentially change the way we explore space, and to improve society society in the long run. On the surface, it seems like a bunch of rich guys comparing, you know, egos. But it seems in the grand scheme of things, this whole thing is bigger than any one man or company. Now, as always, guys, I would love to hear your thoughts on this one down below. For now, let's do some common replies from the video, Can We Terraform Uranus? Bastos PB said, I quote, a mission to Uranus and back would be impossible. Best quote. I told you guys, I had a lot of fun with that video. There's gonna be a lot of fart jokes, a lot of butt jokes. That's what I do. I'm, I'm the guy that talks science and very serious things in a very joking manner. And that's why you guys like it. You, I mean, that's why I think you guys like me and this whole, this whole vibe that we got going on here. Maybe you guys don't like it, and to that, I don't really care. Slack Cap said, today we'll be studying the science of Uranus. Once again, quoting me. Which, if you're quoting me, science should be in all capitals, because I probably said, today we'll be studying the science, baby, of Uranus. Preston's Game Room said, hey man, nothing wrong with being a man child. I am too, and maybe one day I'll be able to watch this without bursting out laughing like I did this time, like five times during this video. <laughs> Look, it's one of those things, if you're gonna talk about space, and they're gonna talk about the planet Uranus, and someone's like, be mature about it. It's like, 
then talk about another planet, dude. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's all for this one. I've been your boy, Pepper, and we'll see you guys soon.